Now, we can actually input any real number into a parabola. Every quadratic function has a domain of negative infinity to infinity. The range of a quadratic function is restricted on one side because there is a maximum or minimum y value. We can also discuss properties like where a parabola is positive, which just means it's above the x-axis, and where a parabola is negative, which is where it's below the x-axis. And we can certainly talk about where the parabola increases and decreases. We're going to take a look at one quadratic function and look at three different sets of properties on that graph just to kind of keep those properties distinct from each other. All right, we're going to look at the quadratic function y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 1. The graph is drawn for us three times. It's the graph of a parabola. It opens down, looks like the vertex is about 3,8. And it has x-intercepts a little bit over 0 and just a little bit under 6. So we can imagine that U-shaped curve opening down. It's important to know where the vertex is because the vertex tells us where the graph goes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. It's also important to know where those x-intercepts are because that's where the graph changes from negative to positive. And we'll need to go find those x-intercepts exactly in Desmos to answer some of these questions. Let's start with the domain though. This is a parabola and we can have any input into that. So the domain here is going to be all real numbers. And we write that in interval notation, left parentheses, negative infinity, comma, infinity, right parentheses. The range is the acceptable y values on the graph, and we can go all the way up to a y value of 8, but no higher. So we're starting with left parentheses, negative infinity, comma, 8, bracket. Next, we're going to look at increasing and decreasing. And remember that this vertex point is the point 3, comma, 8. So that vertex happens at an x value of 3. I'm going to mark that on the graph. So this graph is increasing when it's going up from left to right. So the uphill portion of the graph is the left portion of the graph from the vertex. And so we would be increasing from left parentheses, negative infinity, to comma, 3, and then a right parentheses on that. At the top, we're neither increasing or decreasing. So we just use a parentheses on the 3. Now we look at decreasing. The graph is decreasing when it's going downhill from left to right. So it starts going downhill at the vertex of 3 comma 8, and then it continues after that. So we would write that in interval notation. Remember, when we're writing the intervals of increasing and decreasing, we're just using the x values. So that's going to be an x value starting at 3 comma and ending at infinity. We can't really reach infinity, so we'll put a right parenthesis on that, a left parenthesis around the 3. Okay, finally we need to figure out where this graph is positive and where this graph is negative. Well, the graph is positive when it's above the x-axis. Now it's above the x-axis between those two x-intercepts. So we need to find what those are. The graph is negative when it's below the x-axis. So again, we need to find those x-intercepts so we can say where it's below the x-axis. Let's go ahead and go over to Desmos and just graph this and find those x-intercepts. I'm over in Desmos and I've graphed y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 1. I'm going to touch my two intercepts and I can see that one of them is at 0 0.172,0 and the other one is at 5.828,0. Let's go back to our hand-drawn graphs and write those in. And so this graph is positive between those two x values, not including the x values because at the x values the graph is actually 0. So this function is positive from parentheses 0 0.172 to comma 5.828 and then a right parentheses. This graph is negative to the left of the left x-intercept and to the right of the right x-intercept. How would we write that? Well, we would say left parentheses negative infinity comma 0 0.172 parentheses that's the first interval where the graph is negative. Then I'll use a union symbol here. And then left parentheses, 5.828 comma infinity with the parentheses on that. So my positive region is an in-between uh, set of intervals and my negative region is a union of two intervals pointing to either end. So we can say lots about a parabola now. One really important thing to remember about all of the intervals I've drawn here is that only one of them has to do with the y values, and that is the range. The range is the only one where we talk about y values. 
all the other intervals that we look at here are all having to do with the x values of the graph, the inputs of the graph. All right, I'd like you to pause this video now and give one of these a try on your own. So the function is f of x equals 0.75x squared minus 3x plus 2. And I want you to try to list 10 properties of f of x because we've got a lot of them now. We've got all these new vocabulary words. We have older words like domain and range and increasing and decreasing and positive and negative. I think you can probably list 10 properties of this function. Pause the video and see if you can do it. All right, we're back. Thought I would start by looking at this graph in Desmos. So I've got y equals 0.75x squared minus 3x plus 2 plotted. It's a U-shaped graph that is like the regular U. It's not upside down. And then we can start touching things to get some more properties of this graph. So we might start with a vertex. The vertex is at 2 comma negative 1, which means we now know three properties. We know the parabola opens up. We know the vertex is at 2, negative 1, and we also know the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is that vertical line that goes through 2, and I can even graph that on here. I can write x equals 2, and then change the style to be dashed, and we can see that that's a nice bisector of this parabola. So let's write all of that on our page of properties. So we know that the graph opens up, so this is a parabola that opens up. We know that the vertex is 2 comma negative 1. We know that the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. Okay, let's go back and find some more. Let's see, we've got some x-intercepts here. We've got an x-intercept of 0.845 comma 0 and 3.155 comma 0. Let's list those. I'm going to put that down as one property, the x-intercepts. Okay, what else do we have? We have a y-intercept of 0, 0,2. We can write where this graph is increasing and decreasing. So if I was to just shade in the part that's increasing, that's everything above a value of 2. So that's x is greater than 2. You see it shaded the graph in, in purple. Um, so that's where I want to say the graph is increasing. And we can write x is greater than 2 as left parentheses 2, comma, infinity, right parentheses. Now the graph is decreasing when x is less than 2. It's going downhill. So we would write that as left parentheses, negative infinity, comma 2, right parentheses. We can write the domain and range for this function. So let's go back here. And the domain for a parabola, it's all real numbers. We can put in any input for x at all. So that's an easy one. Domain is negative infinity to infinity with parentheses on both sides. And then the range for this function, well, the lowest value we can have for y is that y value of negative 1. So we can have anything that's negative 1 or bigger. So we would write that range as left bracket, negative 1, comma, infinity, right parentheses. Okay, now we still haven't dealt with positive and negative, so why don't we do those next? I'm going to have enough properties after this. So I'm going to write where the graph is positive and where the graph is negative just to have one extra. All right, so going back to our function, the graph is positive when y is greater than 0. Let's just plot that on here. And you can see we've shaded above the curve. Now the x values where y is greater than 0 are the x values that are to the left of 0.845. In other words, x is less than 0.845 and to the right of 3.155. So x is greater than 3.155. So there's going to be two intervals here. So it's positive from left parentheses, negative infinity, comma, to 0 0.845 with the right parentheses. And then it's also positive. We've got to catch that other interval when x is greater than 3.155, so that's going to be left parentheses, 3.155, comma, positive infinity, right parentheses. And we might as well finish off with negative, right? So the graph is negative if y is less than 0. And that's going to be x values that sit between 0 0.845 and 3.155. So we need a between interval. So we'll write that as parentheses 0 0.845 comma 
3.155 right parentheses. So there we go, 11 properties of this graph of f of x equals 0.75x squared minus 3x plus 2. Let's just recap, a quadratic function has an x squared term, that's the highest degree term. It's u-shaped, it either opens up or down depending on the value of the number in front of x squared. It's going to have either a maximum value or a minimum value, which is also the vertex. And we're going to have an axis of symmetry that runs through that vertex. All of the intervals we write to describe these parabolas are in terms of x except for one type of interval, and that is the range. The range is the only one where we're using an interval that is y values instead of x values.